A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. Mary stayed outside the tomb weeping and as she wept she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been and they said to her woman why are you weeping she said to them they have taken my Lord and I don't know where they laid him When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought that it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he told her. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Who is Mary Magdalene? You know, she's referred to a lot. In fact, there are a lot of Marys, right? There's Mary, the mother of Jesus. There's Mary, the wife of Clopas. We hear of her standing at the foot of the cross. Uh, Mary, the sister of Martha. They live in Bethany. Uh, then Mary Magdalene. There are a lot of Marys. And keeping all those Marys straight is tricky. A lot of exegetes, you know, uh, scripture scholars have, you know, studied all the verses to keep it all straight. Who's who? In fact, Mary... The wife of Clopas may be the actual sister of Mary of Nazareth, the mother of Jesus, which, you know, really? Two Marys in one family? But, you know, there are some uh, pious souls who, (laughs) families where all the kids have Mary as their middle name, boys and girls, you know. It's just an honor to the Blessed Mother Mary. They've done that in France and Ireland. So uh, there are also a number of women referred to. There's a a number of sinful women uh, who are unnamed, like in John's gospel, the woman who uh, uh, was caught in adultery at the beginning of chapter 8. Um, you know, who should stone her? The one without sin cast the first stone, that person. And Jesus shows her absolute mercy. And then there's also the woman who uh, washes his feet when, he's at, when Jesus is a, a guest at the home of Simon the Pharisee. And Jesus says she, she loves so much because she's been forgiven. You know, she's experienced this mercy of God and she was known to be a sinful woman or had a reputation in the town and but she's experienced the mercy of God and knows God's absolute love for her and forgiveness of her sins and she's showing this this overwhelming affection and love for Jesus but she has no name attached to her and and so often Mary Magdalene has been thought to be one of those or both of those people maybe they're so it's uh, but that's uh, a lot of scripture scholars now say well that's unlikely there's no real connection name wise to those people although you know all that's written about that mercy and kindness but what is particularly said about Mary is that she was she's referred to often in the retinue of Jesus those who are following Christ the the apostles the 12 and then all the disciples which included a number of men and women uh, and she's referred to as one out of whom Jesus had cast seven demons. So she should, had a full-on possession, spiritual possession by demons, but was liberated from that. In fact, that series, the mini-series on the, the, called The Chosen, it's about the life of Christ, 
that's the first episode is about Mary, and it kind of mixes in a lot of those themes. So, so she is, has experienced the liberation from Christ, and she's the Mary who ran to the tomb the next day to anoint the body of Jesus or just to spend time there because she wanted to be near him, even if he's deceased, uh, because, you know, her grief was so tremendous. And her love for him, you know, like we're all called to love him, was so profound. You know, so she went there to be with him, and she's now referred to as the one who is the apostle to the apostles because she saw the risen Lord. First the empty tomb and went and reported that, not knowing what it all meant. And I love this scene where, of course, she's just weeping and wondering what is going on. The tomb is empty, and then she sees these angels, and they ask her why she's weeping. And then I love this scene. There are a number of times where Jesus appears to somebody, but they're prevented from recognizing him. I mean, they would know what he looks like, you know. So uh, there's something happening there that uh, uh, just, just saying that uh, he's drawing maybe more faith. Or maybe it's because the idea of an actual resurrection of the body, somebody alive who you saw horribly crucified and buried. I mean, she was an eyewitness to all those horrific events of his passion and death and burial. It was probably just so beyond her imagination. See, we're so used to talking about the resurrection, we forget how absolutely incredulous that is. How is that even possible? But it is. And so perhaps that's why she didn't recognize him. Just couldn't believe that it could possibly be him. Assumed he was dead, this taken off, body taken off somewhere else. But when he says her name, Mary, wow. Rabuni, you know, teacher. She, immediately she recognizes him. I can't imagine how her heart must have just soared at that. But notice what she did. And, and Pope St. Gregory the Great, who lived in the uh, sixth century, died in 604, so at the beginning of the 7th century. He captures this moment and, and it places the importance on it and how it instructs us. That, you know, she told the apostles, we kind of skipped over some parts here in this account from the gospel, but she saw the empty tomb, ran and told the apostles. Ran, they all ran back, Peter and John and, and her, and, and they looked in and they saw that and they went off going, what is this about? But Mary didn't leave the tomb. She stayed there. Maybe it was just her grief. She wanted to be close to the last place where she saw his, his body, where she saw him. And, and there's that just camping out. You know, sometimes I think that's the, some of the greatest form of love we can show anybody is just to camp out with them. You know, uh, somebody said recently, uh, you know, when you could just spend time in the hospital with somebody because they're sick, you may not be a surgeon, you're not a nurse, you don't know what to do, but you're their sister or spouse or parent. Or, and you know what they'll remember is you just camping out there. It wasn't what you did. It's just loving them, staying with them, being with them. And here's Mary just camping out at the tomb. And when Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and did not find the Lord's body, she thought it had been taken away, and so she informed the the disciples, this is Pope Gregory the Great, a brilliant man, great administrator. He served the poor every, meal every day, big, uh, you know, gathered lots of people. So after they all came to the, saw the tomb, they too believed what Mary told them. The text reads that the disciples went back home, but it adds, but Mary wept and remained standing outside the tomb. It's also a worthy thing as we visit cemeteries and remember our loved ones because it's an attachment, so remembering our affection. We should reflect on Mary's attitude and the great love she felt for Christ. For though the disciples had left the tomb, she remained. She was still seeking the one she had not found. While she sought, she wept. We heard that first reading. It's a, from, the, from the Song of Songs. It's really a love sonnet between a man and a woman. But it's in the Bible because it reminds us that's how God loves us passionately. God's always thinking about us. What's going to make us happy? And us as, we as disciples are called to think always about God. What makes God happy? Just like if you love somebody. If somebody's dear to you. When you're in a little knick-knack shop and you see something that you know would make them laugh. You buy that thing because you're thinking about them all the time. Somebody you care about. 
Okay. So that's how we're called to always be thinking about God and God about us. And so she, she was still seeking the one she had, she had not found. And while she thought, sought him, she wept. And burning with fire of love, she longed for him who she thought had been taken away. And so it happened that the woman who stayed behind to seek Christ was the only one to see him. For perseverance is essential to any good deed. As the voice of truth tells us from the scriptures, whoever perseveres to the end will be saved. I think what Pope St. Gregory the Great is trying to tell us here is the importance of, of just showing up, just being there. So if you want to know how to pray, you know what? There are a lot of different ways to pray in the Catholic tradition, rich and beautiful ways to pray. But you know, it doesn't matter which one you do. You just got to spend the time. Do something. Read the scripture. Pray the rosary. Uh, Just sit in silent meditation like a lot of great saints do. It doesn't matter so much what you do. You just got to spend the time. If you want to know about Jesus, you got to just spend time learning about him, reading about him, reading the scriptures. You know, so a lot of that prayer is just showing up or showing up to serve the poor. Whatever you do for the least of my brothers and sisters, you're doing that for me. That's what Jesus said. So just showing up to be of service. How do we live the gospel? How do we, how do we show love for Christ through the, those in need, through prayer and all that? Just show up. Spend the time. In fact, I'll end with this. My friend, uh, Father Eric Taya, is a wonderful priest down in Phoenix. He says it this way. How do you spell love? T-I-M-E. 